What is going on, everyone, and welcome to Rec Talk. And we are so close to kick off in Ireland with FSU. I can almost taste it. We're well within 30 days, about to be within 20 days, just a few weeks to go. And while we're waiting, let's get through some more of these position previews. So today we're going to be previewing the running backs. But before we get into that, if you remember back to my interview with 2025 running back recruit signee, uh, J.P. Powell, he talked about the Flyboys, which is something I wasn't aware of. So I looked more into it and uh, decided I would pay tribute to the Flyboys. Check it out. Starting this campaign is my man Jamal Haynes, all ACC, thousand yard rusher, moves that are sicker than Usher, still racking up yards on Carolina, nothing finer, man, feasting like he's at the Marietta Diner, I say it now so you can't say you don't know, October 12th, Chapel Hill, 4 and no, and we got Trey Cooley, War Ferocious Yellow Jacket, trucking linebacker, send him packing in a casket, Evan Dickens, anyone fast like a bullet fire. Didn't know I could do that, did you? Now, musically, that was all AI generated. The vocals were AI generated. I, AI is going to take all of our jobs. As a matter of fact, recording studios are suing these companies, but the lyrics were all wreck. Be dropping my LP soon. Anyways, let's get into it. So, we'll start off as always um, with what was my prediction from last year. So, I went back and looked at the ratings, I gave them a B minus, which was probably optimistic for that time. Um, we had no idea about Jamal Haynes. In fact, I projected him to be like fifth on the depth chart. We all just assumed Dante Smith would be leading that group. Don't really know exactly what happened with him early on last season. He struggled or injuries, um, who knows, probably injuries, and then really exploded toward the last uh you know, half or third of the season. But then Jamal Haynes converts from wide receiver to running back. Absolutely balls out. He was third string or yeah, third team all ACC. Georgia Tech's first thousand yard rusher in some years. Probably what well, has to be since before Colin, since Paul Johnson was here. So since 2018. And uh what a pleasant surprise that was. Met him at Fan Day. The dude, like if you're gonna meet anyone on this team, you want it, you you really want it to be Jamal Haynes. A dude smiling from ear to ear uh the entire time uh you're around him and you just feel better being around him. Very positive guy. I give him a B plus or a B minus. I would rate them at a B plus. Now, when you look at the statistics, you might be saying that seems a little bit low, but um I'll defend it at the end of the video. So I think they were a B plus. Jamal Haynes absolutely balls out. That's <clears throat> almost entirely because of Jamal Haynes. Let's look at the stats. So, and let's kick some of this other stuff off of the screen. 2023 stats. We talked about it in the offensive line video, and I mentioned it last year. I'll say it again this year. You can't look at running back, you know, in a vacuum. It's dependent on your offensive line heavily, the camaraderie with that group, uh, the trust you have with your running back group and your offensive line group, your quarterback getting you out of bad plays into the right plays. But we're going to try our best to look at it in a vacuum. They're first in the ACC in just total rush offense, 13th nationally. Really, really good as far as just total yards. Here's the thing that surprised me, rushing yards per play, and it really shouldn't, 5.38 rushing yards per attempt, which is massive. You're half the down to gain on average every time you run the ball. That's an equation for success in my book. 
first in the ACC. In fact, they're almost a third of a yard better than anyone else in the ACC, which is also uh, massive, and eighth nationally. There's only seven teams in the country that ran for more yards per play than Georgia Tech did. Now, first downs gained. This is first downs gained by running the football. Second in the ACC, 10th nationally, which is even more impressive when you think of how the identity of this offense switched last year. Started out throwing the ball was really the identity. Ran into some turnover issues there, and then really running the ball became our identity. You don't see that a lot in college football where you just completely change offensive identities. We were able to do it. Only nine teams in the country with more first downs gained by running the ball. Now, long rushing plays. So rushing plays of 10 or more yards. First in the ACC, which is no surprise if you're leading uh, the conference, if you're top 10, top 13 nationally in a lot of stats, you're probably gashing defenses for at least 10 yards or more. First in the ACC, 17th nationally. So 16 teams with 10 or more rushing yards in the entire country, 20 or more, fifth in the ACC and 32nd nationally. So I think what, what I gleaned from those two stats is that we were consistently gaining, you know, five or 10 to 15 yards uh, on the ground. I think we had like 87 different rush plays of 10 or more yards. So very, very impressive. Let's go look at this starting lineup. So since the running back room is small on any team, I've got them all listed here. No doubt Jamal Haynes is, is running back one, right? Jamal Haynes... Uh, I thought was a senior. He's actually a redshirt junior. So we have him for two more years, including this year coming up, which is huge, which is huge for this team. Uh, ran for, I think, like 1,039, uh, somewhere around there, rushing yards last year. Again, Tech's first 1,000-yard rusher since 2018. In fact, the title of last year's preview said, you know, included, Will Tech have its first 1,000-yard rusher? I had no idea it would come from Jamal Haynes. But Jamal Haynes is a guy. Jamal Haynes is a player. Uh, tough, just tough runner. In fact, and this is huge too, in the NCAA football game, in route Road to Glory, one of the running back archetypes has his picture in it. So not a ton to say with Jamal Haynes other than he's running back one. He's a fantastic running back. Now, why I had us at a B plus and maybe not an A uh, or an A minus. In my opinion, to be in the A tier uh, in my grading system at running back, you've got to have two guys that are, you know, well above average running backs. Now, I think Trey Cooley has the potential to be that. This year, he's bigger, stronger, faster. Saw him at fan day two. Uh, that's why I wrote the lyric in the song, you know, trucking linebackers, send them packing in a, in a casket. Um but he did have some turnover issues last year um, that really hurt us at times. So I think for us to step in that next tier, you've got to have a number two on this list that is almost at the same level as Jamal Haynes or at the same level as Jamal Haynes. So I think that's also undisputed. I think it'll absolutely start the season with Trey Cooley at number two. Now, this could, other than Jamal Haynes being running back one, I think this could all change by the end of the season. We don't know what we're getting with some of these younger guys. Some of the other guys that have experience were mainly special teams players. For that three spot, I think it's a four way race. So, probably at the top right now is Evan Dickens. Uh, he's a kid from IMG Academy, mainly um, a Special teams player last year. Now, he did redshirt, so uh, he only played in that. That has to mean he only played in four games, right? But a kid that I know, Norval McKenzie, has really talked up. Uh, I've heard a lot of good things about, um, probably in the front running for that three spot. Then you have Dalen Gordon, a guy that's a redshirt junior. Uh, I think he actually hosted, if I remember back to the interview with J.P. Powell, he hosted J.P. Powell on his visit. Another guy that's been mainly a special teams player but has a lot of experience on the flats. He's number 21. Uh, 
I would say he, him, uh, well, I'll just say he's probably in the running. He's probably number two at the three spot. Anthony Carey, four-star kid we flipped last year, guy that came in, said he's ready to be the next freshman All-American. Uh, I think he could definitely do it. He'd have to step in that two spot, though, to be a freshman All-American. He's shifting. He's got speed. He has great ball carrier vision. Um, you know, he's a four star for a reason, right? Uh, he actually has his own YouTube channel as well. You should definitely go check that out. I think if you just type Anthony Carey into YouTube, you'll find it. Um, he's the one I'm probably most excited about really taking a step up this year. And I think of the guys that aren't Jamal Haynes, pro well, maybe Trey Cooley too, but Trey, just Trey Cooley's a senior. I think Anthony Carey has the highest ceiling, so it'll be excited to see him. And then Chad Alexander, I believe he hit the portal and then uh, didn't hit the portal, came back. Another one of those that's just not a great look. Apologize if I'm, if I'm wrong about that, but um, he's in contention for that three spot too. Then we have Trelane Maddox, kid from Parkview, I believe. We got a run, or not a running back, at offensive line uh, recruit out of there along with him. I don't think he'll see the field much. There's just too many guys ahead of him. I think he'll redshirt this year, probably play special teams in four games. Um, but another kid I'm excited to see in the future for Georgia Tech. So just to recap quickly, I think this is kind of the how it will start. It would not surprise me at all um, for Trey Cooley, Evan Dickens, Anthony Carey, any one of those guys to step up, make – major contributions. So for my prediction for this year, so I've said for, for Georgia Tech to go B plus to A minus A, or even a, a, a plus, you'd have to have three or four Jamal Haynes or better players on your, on your roster. Not saying that couldn't happen, probably not likely, but to step in the A tier, you got to have Trey Cooley, Evan Dickens, Anthony Carey, you know, one of those guys really step up and be um, a guy that you could, you know, put in interchangeably with Jamal Haynes. So let's bump these off the screen. Um, put the others up. So last year we gave them a B minus. I grade them at a B plus. My prediction for this year, I'm going to hang in with a B plus. And there, I'm sure there's people screaming at their screen right now that are tech fans. My position is just going to be, until I see a guy really step up and be, you know, as Bryce Coon says, a dude at that two spot, a phenom at that two spot, really push Jamal Haynes at the one spot, um, I'm going to keep it at a B plus. I hope when we do this prediction next year that I'm wrong. I would absolutely love to be wrong about this, and it's an A minus or an A. They're absolutely capable of doing it. We have the talent in this running back room to do it. By the way, as we run through these offensive previews, you're going to see we've got depth. We've got a lot of depth at running back. The only place we probably don't just have massive amounts of depth at are tied in. But we've got some depth there, too, with who we bring in in the portal. So let me know what you guys think. Um, do you agree? Disagree? Did I get something wrong? Uh, people always let me know in that in the comments. I'm certainly wrong. You know, sometimes y'all have a good one.